Hillsong senior leader Brian Houston has resigned from his church for violating their code of conduct. You know, there's been a lot of controversy around Hillsong when the news of Carl Lentz's affair came out. But it's not just, you know, Hillsong pastors. Um, Pastor Jeremy Foster at Hope City in Houston had an affair. Ravi Zacharias engaged in sexual misconduct. And, and there are hundreds of other pastors that no one knows about that have fallen into sin and have lost their families, their ministries, and their churches because of it. And so when things like this happen, people often ask me, you know, how could this happen? How could somebody preach one way and live another? And so I thought I'd do a video addressing the question, why do so many pastors fall? You know, why are so many of those preaching one message in public while living a very different life in private. I mean, these people preach the right thing, but they live very different lives behind closed doors. And, and I think it's important for me to talk about this because I'm a pastor. You know, there are a, a lot of people that do videos on subjects like this, but they're not pastors. They don't understand the struggles that pastors go through. And so as a local pastor, uh, I, I can speak on this subject with a measure of authority because I understand the nature of their work. Now, I've never experienced the level of success and fame and influence and popularity that these pastors have. So I, I can't relate to that whatsoever, but I am a pastor. And so I do understand the struggles that pastors and ministers go through. So let's jump in. For starters, let me say that no one is exempt from moral failure. You know, I really sense the, the, the fear of the Lord when I talk on this because I know that I'm not above this, that I'm not immune uh, to temptation. Uh, I know that if not for the grace of God and my wife who would beat the mess of out of me if I ever messed up, that I could easily be in their shoes. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says this, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Right? If you think you are above temptation, if you think that you are so spiritual and so holy that you would never fall like these pastors, well, then it's only a matter of time before you fall. So we need to approach this subject with humility, with the fear of the Lord, knowing that if not for the grace of God, we can find ourselves in the exact same situation that many of these people found themselves in. Now, I want to say up front that, you know, everything I say is not to excuse or minimize the sins of these pastors and leaders. You know, as leaders, as pastors, we are held to a higher standard. And when we fail to live up to that standard for whatever reason, we need to be removed from those positions because there is no excuse. So, so this video is not to excuse their behavior, but to show how somebody who preaches the truth in public can live a different life in private. And so I'm not necessarily speaking directly about, you know, the people that I mentioned earlier in this video. I, I, I don't know them on a personal level, so I can't speak to their personal struggles or, or why they did, you know, what they did. Every situation and every person is unique. And even the way uh, that these people failed, each person's situation was extremely unique. So I'm not trying to address why they specifically failed, but just, I'm just trying to give some context and some understanding around this subject. So why do pastors fall? Number one, because pastors are human. You know, I, I think that we have to remember the humanity of our pastors, right? Sometimes you can get so enamored with the anointing that is on someone's life that you forget that they are a person with real struggles, right? Pastors can get hurt and wounded. They can have things going on in their personal life that impact and affect their behavior. And I think sometimes we put pastors on a pedestal and forget that they are people. Now, of course, as a pastor, I have to live by a higher standard, you know, and as pastors, there can be no room for, for compromise. And so, but with that being said, you know, we're still people with, with needs. We're still susceptible to sin, just like everyone else, right? I'm, I'm not Jesus. I'm not perfect. Uh, my wife and my staff and my team around me will be the first ones to tell you that. I'm in daily need of God's grace, which is why you need to pray for your pastors. You should pray for your pastors more than you talk about them. 
And come on, we all know you talk about us, all right? So just make sure that you are praying for us more than you are talking about us. Number two, lack of community. You know, I've noticed that many times when pastors are, are tempted, they don't have anyone that they feel like they can talk to or go to with that temptation. Somebody that they, they feel safe enough that they can talk to about their struggles and re receive help before they cross that point of no return. And so they try to manage it on their own. And of course, the sin just grows in the dark when you try to hide it. You know, I, I read a statistic that said that over 70% of pastors reported of feeling lonely, right? That they had no close or personal friends that they trusted. And as a result, they try to manage their struggles privately, which usually ends in public failure. And so pastors need community. They need to have a, a, a safe place or people in their lives that they can talk to about their struggles. I remember reading uh, the open letter from a, a very well-known pastor who had a very public moral failure. And he wrote this letter to his church. And he talked about how this was always a struggle that he had in his life. And, and there were times in his life where he had close, trusted friends that he felt like he could talk to about these things. And then when he was open and honest and sharing about his struggles, he experienced freedom. They were nothing more than temptations, but he had achieved such a high level of success in the Christian community that he felt like he had nobody that he could talk to with this struggle. And when he tried to battle these things on his own, that's when he fell to these things and had a very, very big public moral failure. And so, Pastors fall because they need community. They need to have trusted people in their lives that they can talk to. Uh, I, I think another reason is simply the need for comfort. You know, as a, a, a pastor, we don't get to have off days. We can't afford to make, you know, mistakes. Now, of course, we, we all make, you know, certain kinds of mistakes, but there are just some sins, some mistakes that we can't afford to make because those mistakes will cost us everything. And, and, and as a pastor, you know, everything that you say or do gets criticized and scrutinized, right? Either you're doing too much or you're not doing enough. Every single word of every message, everything you post, everything you do gets scrutinized and criticized by people. And then, you know, we typically go home and, you know, we talk to our, our, our wives about work. And so 100% of our life and ministry, if we're not careful, can get wrapped up in the church. And so we, we, we don't feel like we have a, a, a safe place, a comfortable place where we can go to for relief, to where we can go to for comfort. And so we end up looking for comfort in other places, uh, in things like drinking and prescription pills or with another person that isn't your spouse. And so that's why when you are in need of comfort, you need to turn to the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Come on, this doesn't just apply to pastors. This applies to every single person. When we experience hardships, when we are going through trials and temptations in our lives, we need to make sure that we look to the comforter, the Holy Spirit for comfort. And if you experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit in your life, you won't have to go to these other things for comfort that leads you down a path that ends in destruction. Uh, number four, pride. You know, in some churches, there is a, a, a great, you know, honor that is shown towards their pastors. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can get toxic, you know, and pastors have their own special parking spots, their own special seats. When they get treated like celebrities, it can create a sense of entitlement. And suddenly the pastor uh, thinks that, you know, there are rules for, for thee, but, you know, not for me. I, I know of, of one pastor who thought that because of his position, he was allowed to engage in certain sins that he preached the opposite to in his church. He, he thought because he is the man of God, it was okay for him to do these things, but he would tell his church to do the exact opposite. And see, pastors and leaders in any realm of influence, we need to make sure that we stay humble, that we always have the towel, that we understand that our job is serving people, that our position as pastors is to serve people, that the people in our church do not exist to serve us. We exist to serve them. And lastly, I, I think that one of the main reasons why pastors fall is that they minister out of a gift and not a relationship. See, when you are a pastor, God gives you gifts to accomplish 
your purpose. And you can minister out of that gift and not out of your relationship with God. You can preach a message that is on fire while living a compromised life. See, God doesn't take away the gifts because of your lack of character. It says in Romans eleven twenty nine 29, that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, which means that God does not revoke a gift because we misuse it or abuse it. And so for me, I, I, I try my best to always minister out of the overflow of my relationship with God and not get to the bottom of my cup because when your cup gets empty, the enemy fills it with other things. And so I want my ministry to always be an overflow of my relationship with God. I, I don't want to minister out of an empty cup. And so that means I need to spend time in the secret place with God, allowing him to fill my cup. And if you don't spend time in the secret place, it's only a matter of time before you are living in secret sin. If you lose your intimacy with God, your integrity will begin to suffer. And so, you know, I think this goes for everybody, but you need to make sure that you have healthy boundaries in your life to guard and protect against burnout, right? R regardless of what your profession is, you know? So for me, as a pastor, right, I, I have some boundaries in my life to, to guard against burnout. Uh, I, I don't preach, you know, every three to four weeks, I take a week off and I sit in the church and receive ministry for myself, right? Because I don't want to minister out of an empty cup. I want to make sure that I have that time to spend with God, to be alone with God in the secret place. I don't want my primary ministry to be on stage. I want my primary ministry to be in the secret place. I don't want to minister on the stage and not minister to the Lord in the secret place because the stage produces performers, but the gospel produces sons and daughters. And so before I'm a pastor, before I'm a husband, a minister, a leader in my community, I am a son of God. And so my relationship with him has to go before my relationship or my ministry to the people. And so I think that these are just some of the many reasons why pastors and leaders fall. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, do me a favor and smash that like button for me. Share this with a friend. And if you haven't already yet, subscribe to this channel and click on the bell so that you can be notified when new videos come out. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject in the description box below. So let me know why you think that so many pastors are falling. Thanks again for watching. And remember, if it's not good, God's not done.